And welcome everyone to yet another Let's Play series. This one's going to be of Civil Generals 2, which I have done a campaign about a year or so ago on my channel. However, I figured I would go ahead and play as the Union, which is the much easier, uh, well, it's somewhat easier uh, side to play as, as you would imagine. I'm going to be playing as the Civil War, the Grand Campaign, everything's connected. And the only difference is that I'm going to be having the music on for a few missions, the video clip's only on for this mission, and I'm playing on intermediate difficulty, which I will go ahead and explain as time goes on. These visibility options, full visibility means that you can see the enemy and all their movements and units, and line of fire shows you where your artillery is able to fire. Confirm, go ahead and start up. This is just a really brief overview, nothing major, don't really have to worry about it. Go ahead and start. This is turn 1 of 21, and um, normally, I'll go up, put it on. This is your mini-map. This one is huge. Absolutely huge. But that's because it's connected to um, essentially two battles. Because you have Blackburn's Ford here, and then um, in the next area you'll have Bull Run kind of taking place around this area, essentially. Why there's all this stuff over here, I, I don't know. It's just over here for really no reason. Is there really even anything over here specifically? Oh yeah, it actually does have those little marker things. Okay, I was, uh, I was wrong. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. You have your enemy down here. They will be moving. Um, the AI almost always attacks. Um, there are some maps where it only does defense, but that's different. Anyway, to go ahead and show off, um, I guess we can go ahead with this. Here's an artillery man. Uh, every unit has its own commander, and uh, they're generally about the same in terms of quality, which you can tell by the sabers here. This guy is a colonel, as you can see, and his numbers have some uh, effect on the unit itself. Where the higher these are, the uh, higher the cap on these things right here are. And I believe they also have some tiny, like, modifiers I don't specifically know off the top of my head. But you can see that he has these numbers here that end up, um, the are essentially increases to what it is. And the reason that he has these numbers here is because he is next to a uh, division commander or a brigade commander, whichever it would be in the situation. And on uh, beginner, these guys don't do a damn thing essentially. These are better units overall, and um, what you can do is that on a uh, start of a turn, you can reassign your division commanders. You can reassign them to uh, whatever units would end up fitting with them. However, I'm not going to do that, because there's really no point to. You can do that if like, a unit's really wounded and you're trying to get them up a little bit quicker. But outside of that, there's little difference. However, they only give bonuses to men that are within their own core. So, if you were to go ahead and look at this, again, you would see that I can only assign him to the artillery because he is of the second U.S. artillery. And so, you know, that's all the units that are under his command that are on the field. If we were to look at the other guy... Oh, whoops. If... God damn it, I didn't mean to do that either. Uh, undo. If we were to look at this guy, Mr. I.B. Richardson, and then we were to go ahead and do that, I can do it with a quick menu. You can see that I can move it to the infantry, but not the artillery. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give a quick thing. Um, this whole report thing, the only thing that I would say is really important to kind of always know, um, besides the victory points, which is your main objectives essentially is to have high amounts of victory points. The top here is Union, bottom is Confederacy, and you can see who currently owns it. Now, you can create your own victory points. If you have a lot of combat between an area, um, then that will generate a victory point. Or, you can have these increase on, the, on their own if you have a lot of combat um, on that square or near that square, or hex, I guess it is in this game. 
And if there's not like if there's not a lot of action going al um, going around the victory hex, then they'll start to lose their value, which makes sense. So that's the primary thing that you want to have there. Um, outside of that, having terrain height is also very important because it gives you a modifier if an enemy is attacking uphill or and if you attack downhill. I believe you get some minor advantage, but I don't remember specifically what it is. Now anyway, um, if you're looking at artillery here, you can see that this guy has a range of 9 and high power 7. So from here, if I was to right click on him again, you can see this is what he's able to fire at. And the reason that he's only able to fire in that direction is um, you have a big hill here, so he can't fire directly uh, beneath that hill and beyond it because he has to fire over this. But if I move him here, and then look, look at how much more he's able to fire at. So I want to station him here, and uh, you can right click and you can see what it takes to end up like moving people and that sort of thing. And um, that does kind of change depending on the terrain and that sort of thing, but um, I just kind of lost my train of thought. Oh god, what was it? Oh, I remember. But uh, with artillery, they have a range and they have a firepower, and the firepower does make a difference the farther, the farther that you end up going out. An example, like if I was to attack right next to me, you can see his attack power is 7. But if I was to go, say, like over here, it went down to 4. And I think that's just because, you know, longer ranges and that sort of thing. I believe that's really the only modifier, and uh, you can kind of see it on units too, somewhat. And um, another thing to note, um, actually that's no, fine for right now, but I'm going to go ahead and move this guy, where can you actually fire? You can fire right there, so I will go ahead and move this guy here, and you can see that as I moved him, he ended up uh, losing a firepower point, which is what this is right here, and he lost some men, which is what happens if you play on anything above beginner. It makes the game a little bit more annoying, but I'll, I might have to adjust it if it gets too annoying. Now, if you look at infantry, they're a little bit different in terms of their um, weaponry. As you can see, he has his musket here. The top um, section is their firepower, and their bomb section is the hand-to-hand. -hand. I don't know how that's specifically calculated. Um, I want to say that, say, if you were to... Ah, I can't show you right now. But normally, there would be a button here to charge. And uh, what charging does, you essentially fire twice, like you attack a unit twice in the same action. I believe the hand-to-hand -hand combat comes into play more then, but I also could be completely and totally wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and move this unit, and you can see that as I moved him, he didn't lose anybody, but that's because I was on a road. And that's why having control of roads, being able to move your units on roads, is very vital. Now this guy here, he has a smoothbore Napoleon, he has a range of 8 and an attack power of 15. So where I want to put him is actually on a higher playing field so he can see more of the battle. But I can't deploy him right now, so I'll have to wait until next turn. This guy gets moved up and he has the really shitty 6 pounder. I hate these guns in this game by the way. You generally want to have either Napoleons or you want to have, um, like, howitzers, which I don't have at the moment. I'm going to keep moving my units up. And uh, it's always best, if you want to play, like, long-term, to have um, more than one save of this game, because if you don't, then it likes to crash a lot, so you got to be a little bit careful on that. And um, I guess I'll also go ahead and show this. You have a command tent that allows you to essentially get to all the screens. Uh, another thing to look for is your reinforcement report, which some battles you'll get reinforcements, some you won't. But you can see that at 12 o'clock, so in six turns, we'll get an infantry. After that, we'll get more men, more men, more men. Just, you know, a whole lot more men. Which is absolutely fantastic. I click back in. Yeah, no. I just said I had to click back in. Yeah, you're going to hear that a lot of the time. And I'm going to be kind of like constantly saving. So with that, go ahead and end the turn. 
and you can see that he ended up moving, no stop doing that, he ended up moving his unit so that means that he's going to eventually start coming after me. Uh, these things right here are, um, oh god I don't remember how you say that anymore, they're fortifications essentially. And they end up giving you um, bonuses to that sort of thing. You can't move through them. Like, once you get in there, you cannot move out again, no matter the unit. So it's a bit odd, but whatever. Now I'm going to go ahead and move you right here. Move you... Um, actually, not down there. I'll move you here. Another thing that I'll do is that with infantry, they have two uh, formations. They have their marching formation, which allows them to move much more efficiently uh, over land. And then they have their combat position, which also changing position does cost some men. Now, combat formation makes it harder to uh, move, like, for example, here. This guy can move, you know, all along here. I switch into that, and you can only move up to here. Like, an example is that um, if I was to have a unit here, like, trying to move a forest, or like on a forest on the road. In uh, combat formation, they can only move one forest tile, compared to more otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of these up, and you can also see that they end up um, giving, they get a slight modifier to their cover bonus, which uh, beforehand it would meant that um, they had a negative one and a zero, which means that they could only have a negative one or a zero uh, cover modifier. Now they have either a 0 or a 2 to a cover modifier. I believe the, um, the first one's attack, the second one's defense, I think. So all of these units are in place. This artillery unit here, because I'm not able to fire on anyone, I'm going to do something which is called the digging in. Digging in gives them a slight defensive modifier, and it also allows them to rest up a little bit, and you can oversupply a unit. And that oversupply, what it does is, it can increase their firepower by a little bit, but it means that um, they were able to fire more than what they were beforehand. And you can see their supply points down right here. And these supply points, uh, I believe it's one for every shot that you end up taking, it might be less though. You have your firepower here, men here, quality and experience. That does play a factor in the unit ability to fight, but I don't know it specifically off the top of my head, so I can't tell you. And this guy, where can you fire? Uh, not that great. It'd be good if I set them up on this hill, however, I think I'd be a little bit too late on that. If I set you up here, you can't really fire worth a damn. That's ah, great, you can just sit there. Yeah, fine. And no, and yes, you can also rename them, but um, I generally don't. So go ahead and save again and end the turn. Or they're going to wait for me, which they don't normally do. Alright, fine. Now, um, everyone's just going to go ahead and dig in here. I, mean, I can do that um, quick keys. You go ahead and set up. And here they finally decide to end up coming. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. And uh, I guess I should uh, kind of give a little bit of um, explanation as to what happens during the battle. Because, yeah, my, none of my guys can actually hit them. Go ahead and end this turn yet again. And whenever you end, end up uh, ending a turn regularly, it will have all your units that have not rested, they will end up resting. Um, you don't have to do it all manually, thankfully. Oh hey, we end up getting, uh, we end up getting Sherman. Yay! I don't remember him taking part in this battle, but um, he, as you can see, he has a crap load of firepower. And uh, that firepower, for the first few battles, they have a lot of firepower, a lot of men, which is not going to continue, sadly. But here at uh, Blackburn's Ford, what um, essentially ended up happening was that... Oh, um, Irvin McDowell, yes, that's his name. I almost completely forgot it. Irvin McDowell, um, he tried to uh, circumvent the... Confederate fortifications that are over, um, where are they? That are over in this direction. 
he essentially tried to uh, find a way to go around their right flank, and that's how this battle at Blackburn's Fort ended up starting. Um, it was a failure, uh, the Union wasn't able to penetrate, and so um, they ended up isn't just tacking headlong and then trying to turn each other's flanks, and it was kind of a mess. Casualties ranged to about 100 on either side, so it wasn't anything, you know, major. It was a very small and pretty insignificant battle, but anyway. You can see that my artillery man here, because he's up on a hill, I'm able to hit him. And if I was to go and say look at a unit that I can't hit, oh, that it's dependent. Like this unit, you can see my man has a firepower of six. Here he'd have firepower of eight, but that's because they're in Martian formation. So I can go ahead, I can go ahead and shoot this man. And yes, you have reenacting battles. And you can see that Defender, they end up losing 5 firepower, they had 8 casualties, like 8 men dead total, and then they had some modifiers that ended up making them lose uh, a lot of effective men, and they lost uh, morale. It says victory points last morale, but I believe it's almost always morale. But I can go ahead and shoot this guy a whole bunch, more battles, and I can shoot him yet again. Now that guy now, he's a little bit unhappy. The main point of artillery is to make the units, um, to lower their morale. That's the main point of it. That's really what you should be doing with all of your artillery. And it's best to have concentrated fire. But with that, my infantry can't do anything. And can I actually show this? Yeah. You can see this man here, he is a colonel with medium stats, so his cap is at 92. This man's a little bit better, his cap's at 95. But here, oh, he's not even at capped yet. But he can go above that uh, minimum. The morale will never get up to 99, really. It stays at about 95 to 97 uh, overall. Anyway, go ahead and end this. I have more men that end up arriving, you go ahead and come on down. I have more artillery as well. Oh yeah, I, I should guess I should turn off that terrain, I, I completely didn't even notice. Um, one thing to note, before I forget, this minus 15 here, if a unit was to route through it, which means that, um, you know, if a unit ends up having low enough morale, if it gets below, I want to say 40 or 30, um, then they will end up completely breaking and they'll either go to a commander and if they don't rally by the time that they're at the commander They will end up retreating back to these points and there are these points at every um, On every map there is at least one and if a unit runs through there They will desert from the battle and you'll lose that number in victory points Turn that off. Now I uh, you guy, you again are the only one that I can shoot, so you're not gonna have any fun. He ended up digging in on there for some reason, which I don't know what fucking guy in his pink shirt gets me every time. Now, because I am no longer in my oversupplied stage, I end up losing firepower. You again, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot you. Again, these I'm gonna get rid of after this battle. Just uh, they take way too long, and I'd just be skipping through them anyway. Go and shoot you, and this one's going to do a lot of damage because it has high firepower. And again, that guy, he's not that effective of a unit anymore because his health's pretty low, so is his morale. And uh, a health on the unit determines their ability to actually fight, I believe, in like withstand damage organization kind of applies to that, but the main factor is morale. Oh, I actually think that uh, health determines the officer's ability to, um, like, survive. Because during combat, there is a chance that um, an officer can be shot and killed. So again, still nothing that I can do. Go ahead and end the turn again. He ended up shooting at me.
more infantry has ended up arriving. Sure, go ahead and land here on this, uh, I almost said tank. Yeah, this is totally a tank. This is a, this is a pre-20th century tanks, essentially. Now, leaving your artillery out in the open like this, uh, relatively close to the battle, is normally a very bad thing, but they would have to come up along here and then attack, and I can move a unit over if need be. Now, this man, he has a range of seven. Um, I don't remember the quick key for that. I don't like pressing quick keys, because it wouldn't surprise me if it shut down this um, emulation. And the, this game itself isn't in an emulation, it's I'm using a virtual PC, because this game does not like to work on Windows 7. I've tried a lot and just doesn't like it. This man has a shitload of firepower. 82, which means that if he gets hit by artillery, he's going to lose a lot. But anyway, uh, you go ahead and move up in here. You go ahead and come on down as well. I like how it's just Peck. You know, all of these people, they don't have first names apparently. No one has, yeah, McConnell, no first name. Everyone else is just, it, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I need, also need to stop clicking on that button. Now, uh, there's an, wow, an 82 firepower man, which I'm probably going to go ahead and deal with. They do have an unlimited artillery, which uh, if I had a unit that could go in and attack it, I probably would. Um, only where artillery cannot defend itself whatsoever, so they are fantastic to uh, weaken our artillery unit on. But uh, yeah, these guys don't have first names either. No one ha- I almost said that. I almost thought that was Garfield. I'm like, no! A future president, even though- No, I think he did fight in the Civil War. I don't remember. I think James Garfield did. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this unit. He does have a cover bonus. Um, and he's in uh, combat formation, so that means he's going to sustain less damage. But uh, he has a lot of firepower, so go ahead and deal with him quick. He lost seven from that. He will lose another five here. And uh, my big boy right here will make him lose, my guess would be probably ten or so. Nope, another seven. So for this turn. And again. You attacked me. Yeah, I already saw that one, okay. Now, uh, he ended up attacking, um, I think, uphill into my unit. And, uh, sustained more, um, some more casualties, but that's almost guaranteed. He ended up attacking my unit again. Whenever they're able to stack more than one unit at a time, that's bad for, um, that's bad for the unit, to say the least. It's not very good. You have more entry that's arrived. You can't fire worth a dick. That is good to note. It's a waste of, uh, waste of my time. Now this unit, he's in a bad spot, essentially. You, however, wow, I can have 11 firepower, but that's because I'm attacking them down too, essentially. Uh, who would be best for me to try to attack outward, though, is a good question. I'll go ahead and fire with you on this guy. You can also shoot him. What can you shoot? You can shoot neither of them. Good to know. <laughs> I don't like diversifying my firepower like that, just because it's really ineffective. What can you hit from there? Eh, it's fine. I shouldn't move you there in the first place. You, I will go ahead and um, shoot at you. Because that's going to do a fair amount of damage. That nah, didn't do a whole lot. Now, uh, let's go ahead and see if uh, he has enough juice to charge. Charging requires a certain amount of morale. Uh, you need to be around, essentially a green bar, so like around 70 to do so. And sometimes you have to invest your armor morale to make them charge, which is why armor morale is very important. If you don't have enough armor morale, then all your units' morale just plummets. So I'll go ahead and click yes. He ended up having to give up his ground. I really do like these video clips. They're, they're a nice touch. They're a bit annoying, but they're a nice touch. <laughs> 